It was here in 1993 that an amateur dinosaur hunter, Ruben Carolini, stumbled across a huge bone. He called Rodolfo Correa, a South American paleontologist with a passion for dinosaurs. For me, dinosaurs is the most important thing in the world. I'm working with dinosaurs. I wanted to do since I was a kid. As Correa and his team headed across the Badlands, he often thought about what life was like millions of years ago. As I was driving into the field, I can't imagine all this giant walking around and shaking the earth. Compared to Paul Sereno's excavation high up in the cliffs of Africa, Korea's was less demanding and more rewarding. Not only were the bones lying near the surface, but they formed an astonishingly large percentage of the dinosaur's skeleton. First time I came here was in uh, August of 1993. In that time we spent four weeks working in this site and we recovered about 70% of the animal. Now we are looking for some missing part of the skeleton because we didn't find yet uh, any part of the arms of the animal or the feet of the animals. In just over a month, the crew dug up almost the complete dinosaur. Among the still missing bones is the jugal, which is just as important to Korea as it had been to Paul Sereno. Also like Sereno's find, Korea's dinosaur was discovered in an ancient riverbed, which created problems in finding pieces of the skull. We saw that the uh, currents of the stream affected more the head part of the body than to the tail. The, uh, the whole uh, skull was discovered completely disarticulated and the uh, pieces, every pieces, every piece of the skull was found um, uh, separate from the others. To raise money needed for the reconstruction of the dinosaur, Korea teamed up with an American science writer and dinosaur popularizer, Don Lessam. You want to try? Find me a jugal, please, Don. Lessam would help bring the discovery to the world's attention. Now, if I knew what I was doing, and I had phenomenal luck, I would find the jugal bone. That's what I'm most hoping to find here. And Rodolfo, too, I think. It's the one missing bone from the skull that would tell us even more definitively about the shape of the entire skull. The death of all dinosaurs is a source of endless mystery and speculation. And despite Korea's discovery of a nearly intact skeleton, he will never know why this animal chose this very spot to lay down and die. What we do know is that it wouldn't see the light of day for another 100 million years. After the bones were excavated, Korea trucked them to his laboratory, where technicians spent months cleaning them. Korea called in Maria Gravino, a local art teacher, to carefully sculpt missing parts. She based her work on Korea's educated guesses and on bones the team had already excavated. Then, temporary casts were taken and transported to a nearby museum where they were laid out alongside the real bones on a dirt floor to form the first look at the full dinosaur. Compared to the head of the dinosaur, the back end was preserved nearly intact. You call them hemo arches, I call them the chevrons, these little pieces that stick down from the tail. To me, it's unusual to find so many of them in such good preservation. Uh, we were very lucky that the uh, tail was found practically in articulation and uh, the sequence of the vertebrae was very uh, well preserved. And beside every vertebrae, we found the different, all of the uh, chevrons that we get. Now, we're just dealing with a lightweight cast here, but how much would this have weighed in real life? Oh, the, um, the, uh, the uh, real bone, of, uh, the fossil bone, uh, it could be about 80, 90 kilos in weight. 
200 pounds mm -hmm. for one bone. Right. I'm glad the shape of the leg yeah. bone was Korea's first clue that he was dealing with a new and unfamiliar animal, one worthy of its own name. Uh, it's very funny uh, the moment that you have to decide the name of the, of the dinosaur because you have a huge responsibility on your shoulders. You know that if you are uh, right in proposing a new genus, that name will be preserved in the future, forever. Choosing a name for the dinosaurs is like bringing a new baby to the world, a big baby. <laughs> Giganotosaurus means giant reptile from the south. This is a, not the real head, I realize. No, it is not. And also, it's not the uh, real, the actual idea that we got about the size of the skull of Giganotosaurus. This, this, this gas is showing our first guess about the size, the length of the skull of Giganotosaurus. So you guessed too small. Right, yes. An accurate cast of the head would be crucial to solving the mystery of just how big Giganotosaurus was. After much meticulous searching, Rudolfo Correa and his crew finally found the prize. More than 70% of the Giganotosaurus' skull, including the entire brain case. So we found, right here, we found the brain case, looking to the uh, bottom, to the wall. Yeah. And to the assemble a replica of Giganotosaurus, Korea called in Mary Odano, who has been reconstructing dinosaurs for more than three decades. But in the right position. Right position because the hemo arches were still with them. Mm -hmm. She compares this present day dig to the earliest days of dinosaur hunting in the American West. It's like the 1880s. My thoughts are finding this vast amount of material, new material, and all over this continent that has never been known before. To help Korea get a more accurate measurement of Giganotosaurus, Odano created molds of the bones and brought them back to her lab in Los Angeles. There, with the help of a team of workers, she began to cast the whole dinosaur. Painstaking work that would bring Giganotosaurus to life in three dimensions. Several months into the project, Maria Gravino arrived from Argentina to help link her sculpted bones with O'Donnell's cast. Most people think that you find a complete a dinosaur all laid out and all you have to do is is clean it off, put it together and put it on display. That just never happens. And there are always missing parts, uh, parts that need reconstruction. So I learned to um, model and to make molds on missing parts. Only a handful of people in the world specialize in casting dinosaurs. Mary O'Donnell's been at it for over 30 years. In 1966, when the L.A. County found a T-Rex skull, that was the largest skull in existence at that time. And I got to work on that, and I thought, that is the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> It'll never happen again. After months of difficult work, the final cast of the head is ready to be made. Polyester resin, thickened with talc and white paint, is brushed on the solid areas of the rubber mold. This material, just painted by itself, is not very strong. It'll be backed with glass cloth, strips of glass cloth, and then it becomes very strong. Once the glass cloth is applied, the resin begins to dry a process which can take an entire day. And while the resin dries, Odano and the crew work quickly to clamp and bolt the many sections of the beast's head together. Rudolfo Correa has come from Argentina to check in on the process and help pull the mold. We're all feeling pretty apprehensive about uh, this first cast. It's the first reconstruction for this skull. It's the largest of its kind. It's an entirely new animal. <laughs> We're hoping very much that uh, the, the cast will come out good and be uh, a success. Finally, after a happy year, the time has come to pull the mold and see if their effort has paid off. This is a huge mold with a lot of underhangs, a lot of uh, 
nooks and crannies that are going to be difficult to separate the mold from the cast. Yeah, get your fingers in here. The fingers in here and it'll pull. And when I say pull it, it means we'll be pulling on that. It'll be under a great deal of stress to remove the silicone rubber from the cast. Oh God, it's, oh, beautiful, just beautiful. When the upper jaw was finally revealed, it was perfect. It's really beautiful, really beautiful. You sweat a little blood over that. <laughs> oh. Ooh, with holes in his head and everything. I'll tell you, this is better than I expected. It really is. <laughs> <laughs>